You are listening to the Final Say Radio Show, a Rappaport Media production, with your host Brett Rappaport and co-host John Rappaport. We do have our friend returning to the program, Horace Cooper. And uh, Horace, it's great to have you back. Well, thank you for having me on today. And, it, you know, this is very important for us to continue to cover, and, and you, you do such a great job when, when you join us on uh, enlightening us on all these uh, particular rulings and then the other things that you cover. And I, I, there were a lot of interesting aspects to this particular case, and I, I want to just start with this one, the uh, Supreme Court case with Ho- Hobby Lobby, a 5-4 decision, and I thought it was announced earlier, I was watching the news, that uh, Justice Alito wrote the um, the opinion on both of them. So I automatically assumed that. that. To me, that was the telling that which way the ruling went, but also that it was probably a pretty split ruling, and of course it was. Well, you're exactly right on both cases. When I heard uh, – we were actually out on the steps, and when I heard uh, – that uh, he uh, the announcement was made that both opinions would be written by him. I thought that that meant uh, that freedom and religious liberty were likely to succeed, uh, but it also would mean that it probably wasn't going to be a unanimous opinion. Um, but uh, here, uh, the court's institutional divisions are subsidiary to the important principle that freedom and religious liberty are supposed to be one of the hallmarks of our American system. Uh, This wasn't really supposed to be so complicated. Uh, The uh, progressives are claiming that this is the first time that a corporation has been declared to have the right to express itself uh, in terms of its religious views, and this is the first time that we've entered the workplace to um, raise the subject of religious expression. Uh, that's not true in either case. One, uh, private corporations uh, often express themselves religiously, and they do so with both statutory and court authority. Uh, my church that I'm a member of has organized itself as a nonprofit corporation. Its organizational structure means nothing in terms of whether or not it's genuinely expressing its faith uh, uh, and manifestations. Two, there are a long line of cases, both statutory and court cases, in which if you are a, an employee and you are working, what happens if your employer attempts to penalize you because of your religious beliefs. It just simply isn't true that this is the first time that we've had the intersection of faith and the public arena or faith and an organized corporate structure. This should have been at least a 7-2 case, if not better. Uh, It is good to note there were only actually two justices who said Just by following a corporate charter, you forfeit the right to express any religious beliefs. Only two. The uh, rest of the court focused more on whether or not the federal government had properly uh, balanced the benefits of what it was trying to do and the exemptions that it was trying to offer. And and that's interesting because when when you talk about the government balancing something – how do you how do you how does the government get to balance the freedom of speech or, or expression that anyone has? And and honestly, in my opinion, I feel that whatever your formation, I think everybody should have freedom of speech. And the on the opposite end, if somebody doesn't like your particular speech, they don't have to do business with you, they don't have to listen. That's right. They could, and and they could avoid you just like we all do. That's called freedom. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Liberty and freedom. Yeah. Isn't that our foundation? <laughs> yeah. So so um what uh, the what Alito said uh and the uh majority of justices that he carried argued is we don't even have to make a close inquiry about this you already provide an exemption for Christian scientists 
You already provide a religious exemption for Native Americans. You already provide an exemption for Amish. And for non-religiously affiliated union members are getting an exemption. You've provided an exemption for a number of people who have been providing health insurance for their employees for more than 10 years. You're giving exemptions left and right, but you've decided, and and I just want to make sure you understand, if those that I just listed don't provide you with contraception service, no sanction. No penalty, no outrage if none of the uh, entities or organizations that I just listed don't provide you with this. But this Christian group, when they said, we want the same exemption that the Constitution guarantees us, all of a sudden the feds got upset and said, you are going to destroy the whole opportunity for people to have access to contraception." We have shifted things so dramatically that if I don't actually buy you a Bentley or a Rolls Royce, it's the same thing as I've denied you a chance to buy a Bentley or a Rolls Royce. Well, guess what? Neiman Marcus, Macy's, and a whole bunch of stores have pricing that, quote, denies people the right to have access to their products because if you aren't willing to pay for it, you don't get to have it. Yet the feds, wanted to argue in this case that not paying for it was tantamount to denying it. There is an express providing of religious liberty in the Constitution. There actually is no language called, and you have to have access to contraception, and you have to have access to an abortion. And even there's no language saying, if you're a woman, we have to give you protection. None of that actually exists in the Constitution. Some of it might be good, some of it might be bad, but it doesn't actually exist. When, when pushed against the actual language of the Constitution, the Obama administration, and uh, they were ill-served by the Justice Department, were prepared to let us risk, absolutely risk, a fundamental freedom like religious liberty for the political gain of being able to trick people into thinking if you're not having it paid for you, it's the equivalent of it being denied you. Hey, that's an excellent point. And now I'm looking at some of the commentary of Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg's uh, uh, dissent. And, you know, she's talking about it, it, a decision, you know, the five male justices delivered a decision of startling breath that would allow corporations to opt out of any law. Has she considered the fact that the administration itself has basically given waivers to all of their friends to not even participate in this law to date? That, that you know, most of corporate America really hasn't been subjected to that which most Americans have been paying taxes on for three, four years already? Well, that's the point. Um, in the statute, they provided exemptions. And then this administration decided to issue special waivers to groups. What the Constitution says is, I'm not allowed as a government actor to say, I like this religious view, and I like that religious view. Oh, but this one over here, I don't like it. I'm, gonna, I'm going to punish it. Ms. Ginsburg and her supporters argue, just pay the tax. Just pay the tax. The king issues a dictate. When the harp, the lyre plays, you're going to fall down and worship. Whether you believe it or not, that's what you're going to do, or else you're going to get, and we can fill in the blank, in his case, uh, King Nebuchadnezzar was going to put you in the fiery pit. But it could be pay a tax. It could be be thrown in jail, which is what King George did to people who disagreed with his religious views. Our government was founded on this principle. We're not going to authorize the federal government to punish you just because of your religious views. This would have been a much harder case if you said, the light is red, everyone who comes up to that light must stop, I'm not giving any exemptions, and a person stood up and said, but God told me I can go through it. That would have been a much harder case. This is a case of Fred gets to go through, Sally gets to go through, 
the bundler that helped out with your re-election gets to go through, your union buddies get to go through, the Native Americans get to go through, but I'm a practicing Christian, I come through, and you say, not you, not you. And not because you're not just one of those groups, particularly because of your belief. The court really should have said, 9-0, government, you can't do this. But as I point out, only two justices actually wanted to argue that if you formed yourself as a corporation, that causes you to forfeit any access or right to exercise privileges of religion. I think it's uh, great that you jump on the tax implications of this because the, the, the very fact of the matter is that people need to do this to survive a very complex tax code. But Horace, I wanted to drive this equation slightly different here because I, I want to be very honest with our listeners. I think this is a propaganda power play. It's, a, it's an overt attack on our Judeo-Christian value system that's being used to validate the quote-unquote war on women And what is it all about? Really, it's about buying votes. Now, the irony here is that this is coming from a president who is an ardent supporter of the Muslim Brotherhood, who's at best, or at least we could say is sympathetic toward Iran and to other radical Islamists who want to talk about the real war on women. And the use of the courts for this propaganda power play is in no means new to the country, but I think it's taken to a level that is actually very risky for the underlying tenets of, uh, of, of our country, because we've gotten to a point where dividing our society is more important than the appropriate interpretation or use of the law and the legal structure. Well, I don't disagree with that, that this um, was a very, very risky move. The consequences of a court saying that even if we like one religious group more than we like you, we can still punish you for your views, was a very, very dangerous one. Uh, This administration has been willing to flout the traditional understanding and constructs of the law. There's a reason that um, since 2012, this court, the Supreme Court, has 13 times unanimously ruled the administration was wrong. The administration got the law incorrect. The administration was unconstitutional in its acts in a way that makes it clear to most people this shouldn't have been so. They shouldn't have needed to come to a case like this. They easily, except for the political benefits that they gain, they easily could have just said to Hobby Lobby and others like them, yes, fill out this form and you get an exemption. Uh, 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 There is no constitutional principle called, if I don't pay for something that you want, it's the equivalent of me actually preventing you from having it. But that is essentially the argument that uh, Mr. Obama and the Justice Department tried to make with the Supreme Court. And, And sadly, they win by losing as well, which is why I brought up the propaganda and implications of this, because they absolutely... There are, there are uh, women, liberal women, of course, all over the social sphere right now who are freaking out and calling for boycotts and bans and how evil uh, people are because if you and I don't want to pay for their birth control, somehow that's a hate crime. I have a hard time equating those two. This is, this is not like our, you know, our grandfather's generations where people may not have been allowed to use a restroom or drink from a water fountain. I mean, this, this is ridiculous to try to equate this in the way they are, are doing so. But again, I point out, Horace, they're, they're winning by even losing the vote because they're, they're taking their base, which has been, for the most part, uh, mired in scandal and even starting to question the president and the current administration, and they're igniting them with the same things that uh, helped to defeat Romney uh, two years ago. Well, there's no doubt that it's important for the American people to be re-exposed to the principles that undergird our Constitution. There's no doubt that there's a, a failing to fully appreciate the benefits of uh, religious liberty, and there's absolutely no doubt, as you observe, that this administration is prepared as the most hostile to people of traditional faith. I'm not saying they're not hostile; that they're hostile to all people of faith, but certainly the dominant expression of faith that manifested itself with the decisions by people to come to this country, they are extremely, extremely hostile to. 
and they are using the political position of the administration's uh, uh, pulpit, the White House, uh, the Justice Department, to try to promulgate that. It's incumbent upon us to make sure people understand. Remember, there has to be at le- uh, in America uh, a modicum of understanding that maybe you don't like the traditional Christian perspective on a certain policy, but would you believe that we should round up, say, Jehovah's Witnesses and have them arrested because of their beliefs? Would you believe that Christian scientists who eschew traditional medical treatments ought to be charged and may, that should be a crime against them? You start to help people understand that we're all in this together, and that's the reason the Constitution was drafted uh, and the, the First Amendment was drafted to protect all of us and our religious freedoms, and that it's wrong of the president or anyone in our system to try to um, target us just because of our views. And so for that reason, the court's action was a very, very positive outcome. Yeah, I agree with you. Horace, I, just before we let you go, I want to just make this one statement. I, I've spoken to a few people from Oklahoma, including some some members of Congress, who have told me that the Green family are very low-key people, and, you know, I've seen them speak at a, at a few events, and they're really not looking for the public eye, and this was completely a matter of doing what is right by protecting their religious liberty. And I also want to add that I've actually done business with Conestoga, and uh, in my past life, one of my past careers, we used to purchase things from them, and another, you know, good people that worked for that company. And again, you're talking about a case of two companies that filed something to protect their rights. They are very good people. These are the people, the, the, they are the foundation of this country. And as I know you do, and we stand by them, and I certainly stand by this decision of the Supreme Court. Yep. Good day for American constitutional law. Absolutely. Horace, what's the website of uh, the center? All right, check us out at www.nationalcenter.org. You're going to be able to look at a number of the cases this session that we reviewed, as well as ongoing cases that we're going to be looking at and other issues that affect American families and people of faith. Absolutely. And uh, Horace Cooper, thank you so much. And, of course, you can sign up for their daily email or, or whenever they send them out. I get these great emails reminding me of all the different things that they're working on and their terrific organization. So thank you again, my, my friend. Thanks for having me on. All right, take care.